Hi, it's 3 a.m. and I have a hankering for rice. Let's get started. So I want to apply Rice's theorem to this language, which is called ETM, which is called the Emptiness for Turing Machines problem. And here we have a set of descriptions of Turing machines, such that M is a Turing machine, obviously, and the language of that machine is empty. And the ETM problem is to ask, given an arbitrary Turing machine, is it in this set right here? Is it one of these Turing machines? And famously, it's an undecidable problem because we can just reduce from the acceptance problem for Turing machines. What I want to do here is to apply Rice's theorem to this language to get a much easier proof. So how do you apply Rice's theorem? You have to show that this language is a non-trivial property of Turing machine languages. So what do we do here? We need to show that it's non-trivial and it's a property of Turing machine languages. So to show that it's non-trivial, all that you need to do is to find some Turing machine that's in there and another Turing machine that is not in here. Namely, I gotta find a Turing machine whose language is empty and another Turing machine whose language is not empty because we're dealing with the emptiness for Turing machines problem. So what's an example of a Turing machine that's in there? Well, let's consider a machine I'm gonna call M1 whose language is going to be empty because it has to be in there because I assume that it's in there. So one thing that we can do is to just reject on every single string that is given. So I can make the start state of this Turing machine the rejecting state and I need the accept state somewhere and I'm just going to put it over here not connected at all. And then therefore, since the machine starts here, therefore every single string is going to be rejected. And so therefore, M1, the description of it, is in ETM. If we do the exact opposite scenario, where we make the accept state, the start state and the reject state over here not connected at all, then this M2 machine will accept every single string. And then therefore, its language is sigma star, so it accepts everything. And then therefore, M2 is not in ETM. I could have picked any machine that I wanted. It doesn't have to be this specific one, but it's a good idea to pick something that's very, very easy to deal with. So therefore, this property called ETM is non-trivial. Well, how do we show us a property of Turing machine languages? Well, that means it's not based on the description itself. Namely, it's only based on the language, and it looks like that to be here, but we need to be sure. So this says that for any two Turing machines, so any two Turing machines, I'm gonna call them, normally when I used to teach this, I call them M1 and M2. I'm gonna call them different because I used M1 and M2 upstairs. So I'm gonna call them X1, X2. So these are any two Turing machines with identically the same language. So I'm going to assume that they have the exact same language. Is it possible that if they have the same language, that one of them has empty language and the other one does not have empty language? Well, that's clearly impossible because we assumed that they're the same. So therefore, we have that both are empty or both are not empty. And then therefore, this is a property of Turing machine languages. And since we showed it was non-trivial before, and that it's a property of Turing machine languages, by Rice's theorem, this language is undecidable. And so therefore, that is a quick way of showing that ETM is undecidable via Rice's theorem. So I want to apply Rice's theorem to this language, which is called EPSTM, that's my name for it which is the set of Turing machine descriptions, because I'm clarifying it's a Turing machine here, and the Turing machine accepts the empty string. And so therefore, if I feed an empty string to any one of these Turing machines, eventually it's going to accept, maybe in one transition or, or any number of transitions. And what I want to show is that this is undecidable. 
And of course, you can apply a reduction, say from the acceptance problem for Turing machines to this, but I wanna do a proof via Rice's theorem. And so what we need to do is to show that it's a non-trivial property of Turing machine languages. And I'm gonna break this up into two steps. So non-trivial property of Turing machine languages. To show that it's non-trivial, we gotta show a Turing machine that's in EPSTM and another Turing machine that is not in EPSTM. Well, I need to find an M1 such that M1 is in here, so therefore it accepts the empty string. Well, one easy thing we can do is to accept every string, including the empty string. And so I can have a Turing machine that has the accept state being the start state, and so therefore the Turing machine will stop immediately and accept. And so therefore, M1 is going to be in EPS TM because it accepts every string, including the empty string. If we switch them around, if we switch these two states around and have the machine reject everything, then it can't accept the empty string. I don't care about the other strings, but I would care about the empty string in particular. And so therefore, if I have a machine M2 that swaps these two states, then this machine will not be in EPSTM. Always be clear when doing Rice's theorem proofs that you can't just always have these two machines. Sometimes you have to have a more elaborate machine, but think about it when you're actually doing this, whether or not it really does justify this. And here M1 is in there because we consider the empty string as being one of the strings that it accepts because it accepts everything and M2, it rejects everything. So to show that EPSTM is a property of Turing machine languages, all that we need to do is to look at any two Turing machines with identically the same language and consider whether one's in there and one is not in there. And so let's consider for any two Turing machines, I'm gonna call them X1, X2, with exactly the same language. So I'm assuming they have the same language off the bat. Could it be the case that one of them accepts the empty string, namely its language has the empty string in there, and the other one does not have the empty string in there? And that's clearly false because these are two sets of strings, and if they're identically the same, that means if one of them is in there, it must be in the other one because they're identically the same. So then we say it must be the case that the empty string is in both or neither. And so therefore, it is a property of Turing machine languages because there's no other stipulation that we needed to take into account. So since we showed that it was a property of Turing machine languages and it was non-trivial by Rice's theorem, we have shown that EPSTM is undecidable. And therefore, that was a quick proof using Rice's theorem to show that this language is undecidable. So I want to apply Rice's theorem to this language, which I'm going to call 3TM, and I've done this one on the channel before, but I'm going to redo it, which is a set of Turing machine descriptions, so see the description right here, where the language of the machine has at most three strings in it. So if we think of a machine that doesn't accept anything, that accepts zero things, so zero is at most three. If it accepts two strings, that's okay. If it accepts three strings, that's okay. If it accepts four strings, then it's not in 3TM because it accepts more than three things. And what I wanna show is that this is undecidable. And you can use a reduction from, say, the acceptance problem for Turing machines to this, but the proof is actually quite complicated when you do that, so I wanna show that this is undecidable via Rice's theorem. So to apply Rice's theorem, all that we need to do is to show that this is a non-trivial property of Turing machine languages. So how do we show that it's non-trivial? And I'm gonna split it up into two cases here. So to show that it's not trivial, we need to show that there's a Turing machine that's in there and another Turing machine that is not in 3TM. How do we get a machine that's in there? Well, we gotta find some machine that has accepted at most three strings. Well, think of the example I gave earlier, which is accepts zero strings, namely rejects everything. So if I have a machine that just rejects every single string at all, so something like this, I gotta have the accept state somewhere, so I might as well put it here. But I'm gonna make the start state the reject state. Therefore, it will reject everything, and so therefore it accepts zero strings. 
And so therefore, it must be in here because zero is less than or equal to three. So M1, the description of it, is in 3TM. And now we need to find an example of a machine that is not in 3TM. So I'm gonna call that one M2. Well, if we switch these around, then that means that M2 is going to accept every single string, which means that the number of strings it accepts is much, 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 much bigger than three, namely infinite. And so therefore, if I have Q accept here, if I just swap these around, then that means that M2 is not gonna be in 3TM. And then therefore, we have just shown that 3TM is a non-trivial set that we found something that's in there and found something that is not in there. Now we need to show that it's a property of Turing machine languages, and all that we need to do for that is to consider any two arbitrary Turing machines with identically the same language and show that it's either the case that both of them are in here or both of them are not in there. So let's consider any two Turing machines. So I'm gonna call them x1, x2, such that the language of x1 is equal to the language of x2. So they're identically the same language. They accept exactly the same things. They may look different, but they accept the same things. So is it the case that if they're the same language, that one of them has fewer than three strings and the other one has more than three strings? Well, that's clearly impossible. If they accept exactly the same strings, then they can't differ in number at all, in terms of number of strings, or even in content. And so therefore, we have that either both have at most three strings, or neither. And then therefore, we have just shown that 3TM is a property of Turing machine languages. And so, by Rice's theorem, we have shown that 3TM is undecidable. And then therefore, we have just shown that 3TM is undecidable via Rice's theorem with a quick proof. I wanna apply Rice's theorem to this language, which is called InfTM. Other people call it InfiniteTM, but it's shorter this way, which is the set of all Turing machine descriptions, because I call them Turing machines here, such that the language of that machine is infinite. So I wanna figure out whether or not a Turing machine accepts infinitely many things. You can show fairly straightforwardly that there's a reduction from the acceptance problem for Turing machines to this problem, making this problem undecidable. But I want to do a much easier proof via Rice's theorem. So to apply Rice's theorem, we need to show that it is a non-trivial property of Turing machine languages. So how do we show that it's non-trivial? I'm gonna break it up into two steps. So to show that it's non-trivial, we need to find a machine that's in there and another machine that is not in there. So we need to first find a machine that's in there, mainly that accepts infinitely many strings. So I'm gonna call that machine M1. So we gotta find any machine at all that has infinitely many strings accepted. Well, the easiest one, of course, is the machine that accepts every string. So if I have a machine like this, where the accept state is the start state, and the reject state is out here, I, I gotta have it no matter what, then this machine accepts every single string, and then therefore its language is infinite by construction. And so therefore the description of M1 is in infTM. Now we gotta find a machine that is not in there, namely it does not accept an infinite number of strings. Well, one easy one is just to swap these two states around to get a machine that doesn't accept anything, and so therefore it accepts zero things, which is finite, obviously. So I'm gonna swap these around. It doesn't have to be specifically this machine, it just has to be any machine at all that has a finite number of strings accepted but this is a very easy one to do. And so therefore, the M2 description is not in InfTM. Then how do we show that this InfTM is a property of Turing machine languages? Well, all that we need to do is to show that for any two Turing machines with identically the same language, either both of them are infinite or both of them are not infinite, namely finite. And so therefore, for any two Turing machines, I'm gonna call them x1, x2, such that the language of x1 equals the language of x2. Could it ever be the case that even though they have the same language, one of them is infinite, has infinitely many things in it, and the other one is finite? 
And that's clearly false, because they're identically the same by assumption. And so therefore we can write either both are infinite, I'm going to abbreviate it this way, or both are finite, because they're identically the same. And so therefore we have shown that this is a property of Turing machine languages and it is non-trivial. And so therefore, by Rice's theorem, we have shown that inf tm is undecidable. And therefore, this was a quick proof to show that inf tm is undecidable via Rice's theorem. I want to apply Rice's theorem to this language, which is called all tm, and it's the set of all Turing machine descriptions such that the language of the machine is sigma star, namely it accepts every single string. And famously, you can show that this is undecidable via a reduction from, say, the emptiness problem or the acceptance problem for Turing machines. There are many other ways to prove that this is undecidable, but I want to do a much easier proof via Rice's theorem. So to apply Rice's theorem, we need to show that this language is a non-trivial property of Turing machine languages. So I'm going to break it up into two stages to show this non-trivial first and then a property of, non of Turing machine languages second. So to show that it's non-trivial, we need to find a machine that's in there and another machine that is not in here. Well, we've got to find first any machine, let's call it M1, such that M1 accepts every single string. Well, that's really easy. We can just make the accept state the start state and therefore it accepts everything. So if I make the accept state right here, the start state, I will get exactly what I want. And so therefore M1 is in all TM. For another machine, we gotta show that this machine, which I'm gonna call M2, is not in here, namely it does not accept every single string. Well, one easy thing we can do is to make M2 a machine that rejects everything. It can't accept everything because it rejects everything. So if I swap these two states, I can very easily get a machine that is not in here. So M2 is not in all TM. And now we need to show that it's a property of Turing machine languages, which means that for any two Turing machines with identically the same language, we need to show that either both are in all TM or both are not. So for any two Turing machines, I'm going to call them x1, x2, such that the language of x1 is equal to the language of x2. Well, could it be the case that one of them is sigma star and one of them isn't? Then that's clearly false because we assume that they're identically the same. And so therefore, either both languages are sigma star or both are not. And then therefore, it must be a property of Turing machine languages because there's no other condition that we need to consider. And so therefore, since it's a non-trivial property of Turing machine languages, by Rice's theorem, we have finally shown that all TM is undecidable. And then therefore, this was a quick proof to show that all TM is undecidable via Rice's theorem. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about all of these proofs into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.